Hey guys, welcome to the Solution Architect channel. In this video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate creating a um, MVC application, which is a .NET Core 3.1 application, and compare it with deploying that application to Azure. And then I'm going to do the similar one for deploying that application to AWS. What I did find during uh, making this video is that on Azure, I used Visual Studio Code, but on AWS, I had to use Visual Studio Community Edition 2019 to deploy. I just wanted to create a simple web application in 3.1, .NET Core 3.1, and deploy to Azure and AWS and do some comparison. I um, couldn't deploy it uh, on Visual Studio Code to AWS because it only supports 2.2 and not 3.1 on Visual Studio Code, but it does support 3.1 on Visual Studio Community Edition. And that is why I used a different IDE for that. I didn't want to, but that was the only way I could actually deploy the website on AWS uh, from the IDE, and this is what I was intending to do. So I hope you enjoyed the video with me. Let's jump into this. So we're inside Visual Studio Code, and I created a ASP.NET application just a quick web app. And then what I did is just change the heading here to welcome to the Solution Architecture website, just to show you that I can deploy this to Azure and that it is running in Azure. Then what you need to do is run um, the following command, um, .NET publish minus C release output publish. And this is the folder that uh, it creates when you run that. It creates the folder publish and it's got all your files in that you want to publish the next step you need to do to be able to connect this to azure um, as an app service and that's what i'm doing right now is you need to add an extension called azure app services or app service just go in there and click on install once that is installed you look for your um, extension or Azure extension um, on the left hand side here look for that Azure button and click on that and then you can go connect uh, to your app service so to Azure so you you'll what you'll do is um, click on the app services and then it will ask you to sign in so I've done that already so I've signed in and you can see there's no app services running here this is really simple from Azure. The way they connected this with this um, extension is quite nice. And you can you can just go back to your code here, right click on publish. So this is what you want to publish. And you can just say deploy to web. This is the simplest way that you can actually deploy something. I know there's probably better ways of doing it through a DevOps pipeline. Just click on that create a new web app you can call it something azure website demo that already exists okay uh, somewhere else so it needs to be unique website let's say azure architect demo I'm sure that doesn't exist click enter and then we wait you can um, immediately go to your extension here azure extension and you'll see something is happening there so when this is done so it's registering creating the app services uh, and uh, then we'll see I'll, I'll come back to you and show you exactly what happened so it did ask me it's asking me uh, uh, always deploy workspace aws demo to this and say yes and when it's done it will ask you below here browse the website so i'm just going to click this and see what happens and open this and there's my website and this is my azure portal so anybody can actually see this website now it's public you know didn't create any security or anything like that you know probably need to do that when you go to production or whatever but simple as this to deploy something to azure now i'm going to go to my azure dashboard and just refresh here and see what services was created 
So it created my website, the app services, and it also created application insights. Now application insights for those that don't know is just to simply look at the performance of your website running. And this is how simple it is to actually get, get a just a static website out there without any database or anything like that. So quite simple, quite easy, intuitive, no rocket science here, really. And I'm going to do the same on a AWS. Now let's get the AWS um, up and running so we can deploy our website also to AWS. So what I found out what you need to do, and I hate to say this, you need to use Visual, Visual Studio, the normal edition. Uh, there is a community edition that is free. I prefer Visual Studio Code, but I wanted to get this video out and show you guys how to deploy to AWS. First of all, and I will leave the link in the description below, you need to go to AWS to this aws.amazon.com uh, slash Visual Studio. There is two types. If you've got the older version of Visual Studio, uh, I've got 2019. So you need to then click on this and you need to download. Click on download and download and install that um, without having your Visual Studio open. You download that. I've already done that. I've installed it and I will show you how that looks like. I'm in Visual Studio and the version I'm using here, I'm just going to show you guys quickly, is um, Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition 2019. It is free, the same Visual Studio code. Let's start. So the same application, I just created a solution for it in Visual Studio um, because you need to have a solution to op open up the project, it will create a solution file for you. Visual Studio code, you don't need a solution file, you just use it from the folder. You need to install that toolkit, and once you install it, you um, will see if you right-click on your project file, which is this one here, you can publish to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Yes, you can go to um, AWS, configure your Beanstalk, and upload your code there, but this just seems a little bit more easier to use. So click on that. I've already... Um, connected my uh, profile to Visual Studio Code will ask you to connect and put in your details in here. I think you use an ID and a, uh, a, a key and a secret key that you need to create on AWS. I can show you the, when we go to AWS, I can show you where to, to do that. Uh, so you have to have a user uh, on AWS. We create an IAM and I'm going to show you where to do that to be able to connect your Visual Studio Code to AWS. Um, select, you can't redeploy because we haven't deployed this yet. So create a new application environment. Go next. And that means we want our environment to be a dev environment. And you can leave this as is AWS demo dev. Um, it, you can click on this to see if it's available. And say okay this is available so it needs to be unique click next the environment here uh, this is 2019 core I'm gonna delete this as quickly as possible because it's gonna probably charge me I'm gonna select that one single instance environment uh, we don't have a da database so if you have a database RDS database you can uh, it will probably give you a selection inside here. I haven't done that. And let's click next. Um, deployment application permissions. You need to have a role. And so I'm just going to use the default role that's coming up, existing role. If you don't have a role, you need to go IAM to select a role for your Elastic Beanstalk. If you don't, you can just create a role. Use a template here to select uh, and create a role. If you want a power user or or whatever, I've already got a role in there. Same one, this is called service role and it's next. So you want to be able to debug. This is .net, the framework .NET Core App 3.1. Now in Visual Studio Code, 
and this is what I found it doesn't support 3.1 yet it only supports 2.2 and my application is 3.1 so let's go next this is the first time I'm running this guy so it might not even um, if you have an AWS deploy configuration you can use that but I don't have one I'm just gonna run deploy and see what happens and I will pause this is probably gonna take a while and come back to you when it's done okay so everything ran uh, successfully it looks like it it's created the environment this is my all the events that happened it created a s3 bucket a storage bucket on AWS um, it created the security group it created an uh, external IP address I think that's what e EIP stands for um, it created and launched the instance the EC2 instance and let's go to our AWS management console um, and uh, it's an elastic beanstalk so we'll go here and everything looks green and we've got a URL here um, so let's click on this URL and see what happens so that's our website so we've got our AWS website on AWS and it's running Elastic Beanstalk and the way we've deployed it was using our Visual Studio Community Edition 2019 with that uh, toolkit that I just showed you okay so while we're in AWS let me just quickly show you the AIM and I've got a user in here that I created to be able to connect so you'll just all you have to do is you go to users and you need to create a user simply click on add user and you just follow the steps here let me add a new user and show you so you need to select your access type which is programmatic um, access which will give you a access key ID and a secret key and this is what you use from Visual Studio to, to connect to AWS so select that one next permission you can either select a group if, if you haven't got a group you just add a new group you create a new group I'm just gonna select my my existing group and this is existing group has got administrator access so I gave him admin access no tags review and create I'm not gonna create one but this is how you create a user and it will give you your um, like I said your ID and secret key that you use to connect so just a quick comparison between deploying a website uh, 3.1 this is ASP.NET 3.1 core website to Azure and as well to AWS now the comparison is Azure is much quicker using Visual Studio Code and it's much more simpler it doesn't create all the uh, additional things for you on their platform so it's just an app service that runs so if we compare it to AWS AWS created a S3 bucket for me a EC2 and then the Elastic Beanstalk website um, so that is a difference maybe AWS has got a little bit more control on what you need to have to be able to run this website where on Azure you have to go and configure your security separately it seems that that is the difference it was much simpler and easier for me to deploy Azure it took a little bit longer and uh, <laughs> I need to, to shave my beard in a few days that I actually worked on this um, I was very busy at work so I couldn't get this done um, during the week so this is why it's done over the weekend but I love both pl platforms at the moment uh, I'm very impressed with uh, the way this is deployed on a uh, AWS but to me, Azure was much more simpler. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Please like this video and share if you want to share my content. See you next time. Thank you.